In this video, we're going to talk about how to integrate Liquibase with Jenkins. Tell me if this story sounds familiar. Although you might already have your application set up to use deployment automation, your database is a completely different story. Every time that you release your application, you have to wait for a person to log in and run a script, or even worse, manually go in and make schema changes before you can actually deploy your application. Sometimes that one step can delay the deployment of your application, sometimes by hours or even days because you're waiting on that one person who happens to be on vacation before you can actually get that database change implemented. What if I told you that it is possible, it is possible to automate your database changes so you don't have to wait for a person to make those changes for you anymore. In this video, we are going to demonstrate one way to do that using Liquibase. Here's our starting point for today. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.289.3. When it was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. And I also installed the Docker pipeline plugin along with its dependencies. I also have an agent that has Docker installed on it. If you haven't watched the video about how to use Docker for agent workloads, go ahead and watch this video right now. And finally, I have a MariaDB instance that has a database in it that is named my underscore app. We also have a GitHub repository that has all of today's code that you can follow along and do it for yourself. And here is that GitHub repository. The link to this repository will be down in the description of this video. You can see here that we have a couple of Jenkins files, and a handful of XML files that Liquibase will be using. We will look at the details of each of these files as we set up our jobs. Let's go ahead and create our pipeline job. So we'll click on new item. We're gonna enter an item name of Liquibase and select pipeline and click okay. We'll go down here to the pipeline, change it to pipeline script from SCM. Change the SCM to git. A repository URL is the repository URL. No credentials necessary, it's a public repository. The branch we're going to build off of is main. And for our script path, we're actually going to do Jenkins file dash one. And let's go take a look at what Jenkins file dash one is. And we can see here that we're using Docker as our agent and we're pulling in an image that's official from Liquibase and we're using at the time of recording the latest version, which is 4.4.2. When we run the job, the first thing that we just want to check out is, are we receiving back a 4.4.2 when we call version on Liquibase? So let's go back over, click Save, and click on Build Now. So we start up, we do Liquibase version, and we can see here that the version is 4.4.2. Now let's take a deeper look at what's happening in Jenkins file 2, because that's where the real work is happening. You can see here to begin with, we have an environment variable named MariaDB underscore creds that will pull in credentials to authenticate with our MariaDB instance. The first stage that we're gonna run is Liquibase status, and then we're passing in the necessary arguments. We have a URL which is pointing at our MariaDB instance and the my app database. The changelog file is gonna be my app dash wrapper XML. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. You can see here now that we're passing in a username and a password, and we're pulling in that username and password value from our MariaDB creds environment variable. Next up, once we've run the status, we will run an update that will apply any of the changes that we see in our change logs. And then finally, I'm cleaning up the workspace at the end. Now let's take a look at the my app wrapper XML file. What I have here is a standard database change log and I'm doing an include over to my app 1.0. This process is considered to be a best practice from a Liquibase standpoint. So we're creating our file here. You'll notice over here in my left nav that I have a 1.0 and a 1.1. So you can sort of tell that we're gonna be adding in a 1.1 in a few moments. But to begin with, we're gonna do a 1.0. We'll come back and make a change to wrapper with 1.1, and then we'll apply it again. So let's go ahead and go back over to our job and make the change to our build from dash one to dash two. And let's click on build now. 
And we can see here that the status gave us output of one change set have not been applied to our database. So that's good. We run our update. And the update was executed successfully. And then we do our cleanup. Now, what we did not look at was what were the contents of our 1.0 file. So let's go ahead and take a look at that just so you can understand what we created here. We have a change set author. We're doing a create table of a table name of countries. We have a number of columns that are being added into that country's table. And that's it. So to verify this, what I have is I have SQL Pro running. And what I have here is my country's table. And we can see that the structure has all of the fields that were defined in our XML file. There are also two other tables that are here that Liquibase uses to keep track of the changes. Now let's go in and modify our wrapper file to include that 1.1 change. Before we do that, let's take a look at what 1.1 is. And in this case, we're going to add a column to our countries table, and the column name is just ABC underscore XYZ. So let's go modify our wrapper. And what we're gonna say here is, include file my underscore app dash 1.1.xml. And that is the file name. Close that up. So let's go ahead and save this. We're gonna make a modification, push the change up. So add 1.1 and we'll push that up. Okay, so now it's pushed up. In fact, let's take a look at our configuration now for wrapper and make sure that both 1.0 and 1.1 are there. They are. That's good. Let's go back over to our job and run the job one more time. Clicked on build now. Take a look at this. The status is there. We can say one change set has not been applied. We get into the update. The update was executed successfully. Let's go over and take a look at SQL Pro to verify. So if we take a look at SQL Pro and I refresh this table, we can see here now that the ABC XYZ field has been added. Here are a few reasons why automating any of your database changes are important. If you typically have to wait for a person to apply changes to your database, by automating that, that bottleneck is now resolved. By automating the schema changes, you'll know that the changes will be applied in the order that you expect, thinking back to our wrapper file, and you'll be able to minimize the risk of incorrectly applying a change. And finally, by including a stage in your deployment pipeline to make sure that your database changes are applied and ready to go before deploying your application, hopefully you'll be able to minimize the risk of having to roll back your application due to a failed database change. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.